Hello everyone, it's Friday and you're watching Within the Frame. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Last year, South Korea and Vietnam marked 30 years of ties, and now the two nations are looking forward to another 30 years with the bilateral relationship elevated to a comprehensive strategic partnership. President Yoon sang yeol is currently in Vietnam for a three-day state visit, having a summit with his Vietnamese counterpart, Vo Van Tong. Two leaders agreed to strengthen ties in a broader sense, ranging from trade to security. What was discussed and how are the bilateral relations expected to further enhance? For this, we invite Professor Song Su Young from Chungang University, and we also have Professor Park Jang Sik from the Tonga University, who is also director of Institute of ASEAN uh, Studies. Now, first question to our Professor Park: South Korea and Vietnam established a comprehensive strategic partnership last year during a summit in Seoul, and now President Yoon is in Hanoi meeting with his Vietnamese counterpart. What is the significance of this state visit? Yes, yeah, so as we all know, Korea established the diplomatic ties with Vietnam on December 22nd. Uh, I remember 1992, shortly after establishing historical diplomatic relations with China. As last year, 2022 marked the 30th anniversary uh, of the establishment of diplomatic uh, relation between Korea and Vietnam. So President Yoon invited Vietnamese President Nguyen Suan Phuc at that time. Now he resigned in 2000, the early 2023 to discuss and enhance the co cooperation between two nations on December 5th, 2022. This time, in a sense, Yoon's state visit to Vietnam uh, is a what to say uh, a reciprocal visit to Vietnamese president's visit last year, and it is President Yoon's first visit among ASEAN uh, countries, except for his participation in the ASEAN summit in Cambodia last year. Even if the previous Moon Jae-in administration chose Indonesia for its first visit after his uh, uh, presidential inauguration, Yoon would choose Vietnam this time. This seems to mean uh, to emphasize the gravity of Vietnam, among others, from the perspective of a UN government. Right. Two nations' ties is uh, oh. indeed important and significant in that uh, this time is actually President Yoon's first bilateral visit to a member of ASEAN, right? Now, uh, Professor Song, how would mm -hmm. strengthening ties with Vietnam contribute to having bigger voices in the international arena, both economically and diplomatically, given that both countries are involved in multilateral organizations such as APAC and IPEF? Yeah, uh, as you know, the APEC is uh, one of the largest uh, some uh, economic uh, partnership, uh, free trade uh, economic areas uh, actually not a free trade but to try to be a free trade countries but it is a intergovernment forum for 21 uh, member economies in the pacific rim and it started from 1989 and uh, south korea and uh, vietnam has participated in this apac actually apac starts from the asean which has started in mid 1980s and uh, with a successful uh, some economic uh, cooperation among the member countries in Asia, ASEAN, ASEAN countries, ASEAN members, then it is expanded to uh, Asia Pacific economic uh, uh, cooperation has been uh, under the with the par par participating of the United States and the several the Pacific Rim countries. Actually, the purpose is to uh, some compete with uh, some European, Europe and uh, North America free trade agreement and uh, those advanced countries uh, uh, cooperation of the uh, economic uh, circle. Then in Asia Pacific region is necessary. But uh, since uh, the United States has uh, started a, another some uh, the Trans-Pacific Partnership uh, but however, the Donald Trump, the, uh, the ex-president of the U.S., has uh, decided uh, withdraw, has withdrawn from the TPP, and then the Joe Biden, current uh, U.S. president, has uh, offered a new Indo-Pacific Economic Framework mm -hmm. Prosperity 
and uh, this is started in May 23, 19, uh, 2022. So this is quite uh, criticized by the, some other members because it has uh, no any some economic uh, agenda. As rather, it is uh, criticized as uh, some political grouping rather than the economic grouping. So I think I believe the uh, both countries are in both uh, some uh, economic trade agreement uh, uh, corporate co cooperation circles, but still they both work and they could benefit from each other as long as they stay in the APEC uh, structure rather than IPF. Right, I see they could benefit from each other uh, mm -hmm. as long as they're in the APEC together. Now, uh, Professor, Professor Park, seeing the ties yeah. in a little bit more broader sense, Vietnam is, as far as, uh, as we all know, uh, is an ASEAN country, right? And many point out that closer ties with Vietnam are especially important in taking the relationship between South Korea and ASEAN to another level. Now, why is ASEAN important and why focus on Vietnam? Yeah, uh, Vietnam has historically been uh, considered as the country that we are most familiar with among ASEAN members countries. Of course, we had, an, uh, first of all, unfortunately encounter in the past with the Vietnam War. But because of that, it has actually become a country that we have come to understand and be friendly uh, 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 somewhat. So our Korean people have stayed there more than other countries. And as our business has started to do well, the number of Korean people increased uh, beyond the imagination there. Mm. Also, uh, in terms of uh, social cultural aspects, the influence of Korean wave has been great there. And, and uh, a lot of people from both countries have uh, communicated each other among others. Probably the number of Vietnamese women as Korean wives here has also increased significantly. Mm. Uh, moreover, historically, uh, Vietnam has not had a close relationship with China. So uh, you might think that it would be uh, easier to include the Vietnam in the framework of the Indo-Pacific Initiative that a, un a government uh, uh, emphasizes and plans. Hmm. I see. So the ties between the two countries is important in terms of in the Pacific plan that South Korea is trying to aim to aim for. Now, uh, Professor Seoul, I'd like mm -hmm. to tap on economic issues as well. Uh, South Korea is the biggest foreign investor in Vietnam with almost 9,000 companies already running there. Uh, what companies are located there and what is it about Vietnam that's attracting many South Korean companies uh, to invest? Yeah, I have learned that uh, Korea, South Korea is the largest foreign investor in uh, Vietnam. But I wonder, uh, in accumulate, uh, cumulative investment might be the largest. I'm not, I, uh, I'm not sure. And uh, uh, currently, in the year of 2023, we have seen that the foreign direct investment to, into Vietnam has been dropped very much, very much. Mm -hmm. So until May, the manufacturing got 61%, uh, the financial sector 14%. Out of that, the Singapore currently, the Singapore was the largest source of uh, foreign investment in Vietnam. And the next is uh, Japan and China. So we have seen because of there are several regions uh, out there because of the world economy has suffered from the, some supply disruption and the, some declining uh, growth rate and the particularly because of coronavirus COVID-19 caused uh, some economic growth rate very low, relative, particularly in such a Vietnam, uh, some uh, developing countries. So that would be the main reason. But currently, the Korean company's investment in Vietnam has been particularly plunged so much. Mm. The reason is some experts argued that, uh, actually stated that uh, uh, the regulation by the uh, Vietnamese government has been increased a lot, and even the Vietnam government considering levied more taxes on it. So Korean companies think about the 
not just it, it, they feel the, some kind of a risk or uncertainty about the, uh, the corporate environment and circumstances in Vietnam is because of the going or and the build up all the factories and uh, uh, it's going to be a very uh, sometimes it is it, it causes a very serious problems because uh, it's difficult more difficult to, to find a labor force in mm. Vietnam and then the increase of the wage and also the regulations such as for example the firefighting services should be established in the in the corporation so that is a kind of that reduced some attractiveness of the uh, foreign uh, investment in Vietnam but uh, as it is seen in the currently the the current uh, counterpart of president yun of uh, the Vietnam president is uh, Again, Bo, uh, Vo Van Tuong. Vo Van Tuong is uh, like a very new president, and uh, the previous president of uh, uh, Ng Nguyen uh, Phuc, uh, I Sweet. remember, uh, Suan, Suan Phuc. Yeah, yeah. Ng Nguyen Suan Phuc has been, uh, he has, uh, as far as I know correctly, he has uh, some scandals in the, some, because of the bribe and some other. Uh, not bad, a uh, bad relationship with uh, some foreign companies. So, to that regard, we, our uh, corporations and uh, who has been in the Vietnam, as uh, they think about again and uh, potential uh, risk out there. So that is the cause, and uh, the primary cause is uh, maybe taxation. Mm. Taxation would be the primary cause, I think. Mm, right. So mm -hmm. South Korea was the biggest foreign investor in, in Vietnam, mm -hmm. but uh, it has seen recent drop in the right. investment because of several reasons. Now, Professor So, I'd like to ask you mm -hmm. about trade as well. Uh, Vietnam mm -hmm. is one of the three biggest trading partners of South right. Korea. And to further increase bilateral trade, the two leaders agreed to establish mm -hmm. an electronic origin data exchange system. Mm -hmm. How is mm -hmm. this going to help boost trade? And is this going to in any way help to you know, increase the investment. Yeah, actually, this electronic origin data exchange system (EODS) is uh, just a paperless uh, and uh, facilitate the trade, and uh, then the uh, the exports or imports does not have to prove that with uh, some kind of written documents the origin of the product is in some certain country, and for sure, particularly in the trade pre-trade agreement, it is quite important because the uh, most favored nation rule has been applied, then without such uh, some credible and uh, very uh, uh, environment and uh, without, without such uh, proof, then the problem is uh, there is uh, some uh, other countries who is not in the, some free trade agreement, they could export their product through the other countries. Such problem occurs in the uh, United Kingdom, particularly Northern Ireland in the European Union. So that is, uh, to that regard, this kind of uh, uh, electronic origin data exchange system has been approved and the MOU has been established since uh, last year's uh, September, uh, November, uh, December, uh, October, October 1st, 31st. And that is uh, a very, at least a good signal, good mm -hmm. signal. But however, it, th even though the trading partner, uh, the South Korea and the Vietnam, particularly the Vietnam is the third largest uh, trading partner with uh, South Korea, clearly China and the US and the other countries are much bigger in terms of the uh, monetary unit or monetary mm -hmm. amount, so they, are, they are much bigger. Uh, but what is important is uh, we have to understand uh, about the, do not have too much lousy uh, picture about the Vietnam economy because uh, currently Vietnam's uh, per capita GDP is 103rd in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, clearly developing countries such as Vietnam has shown a very high level of the gross rate of GDP. That is for sure. So the future prospect is good. But still, they import intermediate goods and make it assemble and sell it into some uh, other advanced countries at the very low cost, at the very low price. So that is currently the main uh, business activities. So therefore, clearly the relationship between Vietnam and uh, South Korea, the economic ties needs to be increased for future. But 
at least in the short term and the mid term, we have to be very prudent and do not have a too optimistic view on that. So that is always we need to think about. Right. That is the aspect that we need to think about. Mm. Right. Now, uh, Professor Park, I'd like to move on to uh, mm -hmm. security issues, actually. Uh, President Yoon pointed out that North Korea's nuclear and missile programs are the most urgent regional security threat and noted that South Korea will seek uh, uh, to strengthen coordination with both Vietnam and ASEAN to help deal with this. Uh, what sort of coordination do you expect this to be? Yeah, I, uh, frankly speaking, to be honest, uh, this is a mostly frequently asked the question. <laughs> so, uh, from the view of uh, our common people in mm -hmm. Korea, but actually, the ASEAN has is a very reluctant to hear that the, in their position. You know, ASEAN has not historically uh, supported or sympathized with our position, specifically on security issues with North Korea. In fact, uh, this because uh, there is an organization on this issue within ASEAN boundary, so-called uh, ALF, ASEAN Regional Forum. Mm -hmm. So where the North Korea is also its a member, including South Korea also. Mm -hmm. So almost uh, all uh, the Asian uh, countries uh, has, uh, you know, uh, participated in, in the organization centered in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. ASEAN wants to deal with the security m problems uh, within this boundary of organization. When it deal with ASEAN countries on security issues, it is better to talk about uh, uh, some more uh, universal position and expect them to support our position. So uh, I think so. Uh, this is not so much affirmative in dealing with the uh, security problems with North Korea. Mm, I, I think that we have to uh, avoid as far as possible. Mm. You know? Oh, interesting, okay. interesting. Uh, so you're saying the ASEAN countries are quite sensitive about dealing with this mm. matter uh, that, are, that are related to North Korea. Interesting. Uh, Professor Song, the defense mm -hmm. sector is another area mm -hmm. in which both countries are trying to expand ties, and South Korea is to help strengthen Vietnam's maritime security capabilities. Uh, mm -hmm. Against what backdrop is such a security deal coming, and in what ways could ties in the defense sector with Vietnam be broadened? Uh, recently, because of the Russian Ukraine war, uh, Korean defense industry has enjoyed a very uh, profitable and uh, uh, very lucrative uh, business uh, earnings. Uh, however, in uh, as the professor has already a little bit mentioned about uh, some this kind of the ASEAN uh, do not want to talk about uh, some uh, some political or security issue in relation with uh, North Korea. So, I think uh, even though the ASEAN countries and the Vietnam, including Vietnam, for example, Vietnam has waged war against uh, China after they uh, after 1975, 1978, 89. So. Still, the China uh, became too strong and exert their power over the ASEAN and the Southeast Asia. The ASEAN countries, clearly, the Vietnam does not like it. Mm. But however, they do not want to be involved with either some kind of political or tensions, problems with uh, between particular China and, uh, for example, uh, United States and uh, in relation with uh, maybe Taiwan and uh, North Korea. It's going to be very uh, complicated issue and a complex issue. And considering the political system in Vietnam is, uh, Vietnam is the same as China. I mean, they have just one, one party country and does rank one the strongest, uh, politically the strongest person in Vietnam is not the president, who is a counterpart of President Yoon. Actually, his, uh, his name is uh, Ng Nguyen Phu Trong. I'm sorry about to remember the, the uh, mm -hmm. Vietnamese uh, the president's name. Yeah, Trong. But he, is, uh, he was born in 1940, uh, uh, 1944, so he was almost 80 years old. He is like uh, some work, like uh, some kind of guardian and uh, some kind of the custodian over the 
uh, the current president of the uh, Boban uh, Tuong. Mm. Boban Tuong. So, so considering that situation, uh, when the as long as the top ranked uh, powerful pe uh, person mm -hmm. considers, they always consider the, their own uh, benefit to the Vietnamese people, not mm. just for uh, other countries' mm. uh, benefit. So we okay. have to think, uh, consider that issue mm. also. I see. Now, I'd like to ask many more questions, but uh, before I let our yes, experts yes. go, I'd like to ask this last question to our Professor Park. Uh, having talks with Vietnamese students and instructors of Korean language was part of President Yoon's itinerary. That makes me wonder mm -hmm. how strong is Korea's influence in terms of soft power in Vietnam, and how could ties between future generations of each country be strengthened? Could you briefly tell us? Yeah. The impact of Korea wave in Vietnam has been incredible. So if you think about it, uh, we are really benefiting from the Korean way without much effort. This time, the government is trying to convey the impact of Korean way to the world more strongly uh, through, I remember, K Culture Initiative. So mm -hmm. I'm also a member, the advice member of the Minister of Culture. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, for this year, uh, after, uh, after uh, the five, for five years after this year, so they are planning a, a great uh, the program on the K culture initiative. Mm. So in that sense, uh, I think uh, Vietnam can open a new chapter in international cultural exchange under this government. So uh, for this uh, point, so President Yoon and his wife the participate in uh, some cultural uh, visit the cultural center and enjoy some cultural aspect that so the this is a very uh, different from other uh, previous president's mm. activities mm -hmm. and then uh, the space price of the program are still lacking though mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, so we we are so somewhat that it's so among the three countries mm. Korea Japan and and China, so we are very weak in, the, in, in economic power, but mm. uh, we are can be a, a, a draw a, a great attention in in terms of a culture uh, mm. exchange. Right, I see. It's so good to hear that our soft power is expanding, uh, especially in ASEAN countries. Now, unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. Thank you, Professor Park and Professor Song, for your insights. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Now that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We'll be next Monday with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the weekend and goodbye.